Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the show. I wanted to really quickly just give you a perspective of the game that honestly isn't really seen or heard just due to the fact that people, well, it's maybe due to the fact of uneducated uh, people coming into space as normies and kind of understanding where they get their ground, you know, their bearing straight with things. I really just want to cut to the chase and just, you know, mitigate the bullshit right quick. I ain't gonna lie, I had a few drinks. I feel like kind of uh, being an educator of sorts, but also I feel like uh, giving you guys a, a perspective of the game that you guys may or may not be realizing. So let's dive right into it. We gotta ask ourselves when it comes down to in 2020, 2021, became a time field where uh, there was NFTs left and right. And Though the NFT phase has somewhat died down, the pump fund phase and dog with tools, specifically when it comes to bundling, has became a new phase. Now, if we do our homework and if you're just jumping into the game and you don't know what you're doing, some people I talk to on a day to day basis with my one on one courses tell me that they don't have an idea what NFT means or what. I kind of have to sit back and I'm digress and I have to kind of sit back and give them the whole playing field. You know, you're training fungible tokens. Now, I want to dig deep as far as what makes things worth your while. Because if you don't have a full understanding of the game, it's like if you, well, how would Michael Jordan, for example, be the best player in the world if he didn't know about Larry, Larry Bird? Or if he didn't know about Jerry West? You know, or if he didn't know about Pistol Pete. Hello. You know what I'm saying? So in order to be the best player, in order to be the best deployer, in order to be the best bundler, in order to be the best mass sniper, you have to know about those before you and be able to understand the playing field because, again, it's not like this shit's being told on YouTube it's on a consistent basis. There's a lot, of, a lot of shit, a lot of people, honestly, that do too much fucking energy drinks and that are just screaming in their fucking microphones, not making any sense, or lo- literally throwing P&Ls at you. And getting you titillated, your brain titillated, and all of a sudden, you said to yourself, oh, you know, this must be the next biggest thing. But what I like to do is really not give you the false sense of things and just give you the reality. So let's dive into it, all right? So first thing first, I'm going to talk about Magic Eden. So what we have here, obviously, we got Dawa Tools, right? Check out the Wallace Boys. Copy them if you want. You'll be punished if you if if you shall do it. <laughs> but um, in reality, um, once you got Darwin Tools settled, I wanted you to dig deeper, dig deeper behind Darwin Tools, dig deeper behind the fungible again keyword fungible tokens that are on Pump Fund, because in order for you to be a successful deployer in this game, you're gonna understand why there's a demand. There's a real demand somewhere, and you just don't know where it's at. It's not in the shit coins, ladies and gentlemen. There's actually a thing behind the scenes that you have no idea that's going on right now. This is because it's being light gated from you. And guess what? I'm going to whistle blow. So this is how it works, guys. I'm not going to basically shield this particular company. But basically how it works is you have companies that are literally creating brick and mortars around Solana mainnet servers. Around the world, you have New York, you have Frankfurt, you have Virginia. There's like literally five or six of them. These companies, these whales, outside of the pump fun world, outside the meme world, we have to ask ourselves where the fucking demand is coming from. Where is it coming from beyond the size of fact of profitability? Let's go deeper, guys. Let's think smarter, not harder. Well, in this little world of Magic Eden here is essentially a Solana world where you can buy NFTs. Now, the reason why these NFTs are essentially important to you as developers and employers and to understand your essential matrix you're in is because this is where a lot of the nodes are honestly are found. People come into the Telegram all the time and come into the Discord all the time asking the same exact question. What is that question? Where can I find the best node? And to be quite frank with you, respectfully, and I'm just giving you tough love here if you have to ask yourself that fucking question where can i find a node you are already too fucking late 
So that's why you have to tune into channels like this because I'm going to give it to you straight raw and then cut because at the end of the day, you're kind of jumping in and not understanding where things are currently at. So what's happening here is essentially is you have these companies, you have these these whales that literally will go fly to the geographical location of where Solana is. Again, we said Frankfurt, we said uh, New York, there's different locations around the world. They will literally create a brick and mortar. For those that don't know what that means, it's literally a physical business location where they will bring in servers. RPS, GRPC servers that'll be essentially working indirect, well, not indirectly, but directly with the Solana blockchain. And what happens is they develop these servers around these main nets. These are what they're called. And essentially, within the actual servers, they're literally called main net. Now, the main nets where they're at, wherever it be Frankfurt, whether it be Virginia, whether it be New York, you name it, they'll be geographically placed in a proximity location and they'll buy, let's say, hypothetically speaking, they'll buy a good 80 to 100 of uh, servers, physical servers that need to be placed into air-conditioned environmental rooms to make sure that they work at optimal speeds, okay? Now, what happens then is they start a test of beta. This beta is to do one thing and one thing only, is to basically clock the average speed so that way it is, they're basically in the system physically making sure that things are able to run at a speed where it's able to basically print them money. They don't have to spend the time nor the energy within the actual meme infrastructure because they're providing the source of what's actually sniping you from the beginning. Okay? Hopefully you're following me. Hopefully you're learning something. So, pardon me. One moment, please. So what happens is, after optimizing and getting these servers ready and rock and rolling, they go out, they have a beta. Within that beta, users are essentially required to give feedback because they're using the data. I mean, they're using the, the node, sorry, for free at that point because they're in beta, right? And eventually, they'll be brought into what is called a whitelisting situation. Now, that whitelisting situation is essentially the users that were able to every day go in there test it be able to provide feedback because at the end of the day they're providing their liquidity for a particular node that they don't know is essentially clocked at a speed that is supposed to be ready for public it's again they're in beta right so with that being said after that time period in the devs and the mods working with the public, the community, because a lot of these devs and mods are coders. They're not into the in the into the game of Ponzi-nomics and buy and trading the mean coins. They know how PHP, how React, how JNode, etc. How all these coding, you know, works. But they don't have a lick of experience when it comes to specifically trading. But well, most of them don't. So. With that being said, they depend on the community's guidelines to be able to help them with the liquidity with the liquidity that they give them when it comes to specifically just trying out the, the specific RPC node with their own deployments. Hopefully, you're still with me. Now, after they go to be from beta to public, what happens from there is they get into a whitelisting situation where they have a floor price. They essentially will create a thing called a non-fungible token, a NFT, and they will give the NFT an assigned server. So, for example, if I buy 100 servers, I'm a whale. I have a lot of money. I buy 100 servers. I go to the brick and mortar, to the geolocation, to where Solana is actually closely located. 
because this is going to give me a proximity advantage when it comes to the buy and sell transactions to and from the blockchain. I'm breaking it down to a minute school as much as possible. So with that being said, I assign these NFTs, these non-fungible tokens that will be basically a floor price of, let's say, hypothetically speaking, 30 sol. Okay. So the floor price is 30 sol. Immediately, as soon as it goes out, all 80, let's say there's ace NFTs, all 80 of them sell out. Boom. Immediately, all 80 sell out for 30 Solana. A quite a significant amount of money, as you can quite see if you do the math. However, when it comes to specifically any NFTs, what people also have to understand and the mechanics of it is it comes with royalties. So if you're an owner of these particular things, what happens is if you have resales, which you will have because the floor price will go up, and the reason why the floor price goes up is because you have people like yourself that's watching this video right now jumping into the space of becoming a deployer and looking for that one thing that everyone's asking in the same bolt, which is what? Where can I find a node? So when a node has so much quote unquote demand, a real life demand, we're not talking about pump fun where it's like diamond hands. So this is something that they need in order to be able to be successfully profitable in the deployment game. Now, with that being said, right, that Saudi Solana now becomes 60, 70, 80, 100. The more and more people get onboarded within this space, the more demand and pressure is on these node companies. And it only takes a certain amount of whales to leave the actual D5 3.0 system and go into a 2.0 world to essentially hand off to the 3.0s an NFT to monetize what they did in the 2.0 world. Does that make sense? Hello. So the reason why when it comes to specifically bundling, when it comes to specifically after getting your bot, getting this lovely tool, this dog with tools here, the reason why it's hard for a lot of people coming in and onboarding into deploying uh, to bundlers and mass snipers and having that over ever asking question completely over and over again about specifically RPC nodes is because for the simple fact, the demand is currently outweighing the supply. Now what I'm going to do, however, is show you, they say, if you could teach a man to fish, he'll never be hungry for the rest of his life. And what I'm going to do is show you in my further episodes for free. I do have an academy. I have a three hour academy that people love. Now, if you watch this episode so far, this is now the time where you can probably turn off if you don't like shill. But hey, shill pays the bills. That's a t shirt. But people are loving my academy and my dog with tools community here that I'm a third party affiliate member here. I really am enjoying the vouch system as far as what they have to say. A lot of people are, see Warren Guru. I mean, at the end of the day, um, I'm really proud to give a value to this ecosystem that people can sit back and say, hey, I vouch it, He's, he, I stand by it. And again, I always tell people, and then who asked me directly why and how and what makes you the guy? Well, I'm the guy who got liquidated several times. I'm the guy who had to ask money and borrow money from his own mother. I'm the guy that's not afraid to tell you about my losses. The guy that's going to be online telling you about his wins all day long is lying to you. That's just the, the, the dead honest truth. The person that's online telling you that he lost more time than he won is the person that's probably going to be telling you the fucking truth 
because he's got all the secrets that at the end of the day, people fucked him over. And that's me. That's me. So with that being said, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm simply a guy on YouTube here with this bundler called Dog Whip Tools. It's an amazing tool. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the ecosystem as far as behind the scenes when it comes to these RPC nodes. I'm going to be diving into further episodes about how to give you guys a little bit of understanding on how to really do your own research. You can't find this shit on Google. Google is not going to allow people to give advertisement in this space because there's so much scams that go on with it. So with that being said, you have to essentially go through the trenches, so to speak. And I'm glad that you joined my channel. I'm here to basically tell you for what it is and do it truthfully and not be up there like a TikTok guy throwing P&Ls at you. I'm giving you case studies and giving you examples. I have a course. Check it out. Check out the videos. But with that being said, I'm just another YouTuber doing my thing, right? What can I say? My name is Warren Grew. Um, thank you so much for joining me again today. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessed day. Check out the Dog with Tools community. Uh, check out the Dog with Tools bot. If you're into bundling, if you're into taking your money into astronomical levels, please reach out to me. I have a three-hour academy that people love, that can vouch for. It's going to give you a lot of knowledge and I update consecutively. So, yeah, with that being said, have a wonderful, blessed day, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I'll talk to you soon.